He figured that out. He called uh, Slim, and Slim called us that morning, like eight o'clock in the morning. Hey, Boosie, looking for the studio. We end up got getting dressed, rushing to the studio like nine at nine a.m. You know, rappers. I don't hear from rappers till one, two o'clock mm -hmm. p.m. And that's the early ones. And um, he pulled up with his crew and in a wheelchair, and they rolled him in there. And I think that first session, they rolled him straight to the booth, and he sat in the booth all day and behind the microphone and just rap. And I think then it kind of, that led to like, what, two months? Two, three, three months. months? Yeah, two, three months every the very day. very next day, that's how we locked in. The first day we locked in with him when he came to the studio, he don't know us from a can of yeah, paint. He yeah, see he got a feeling he's referred him to the studio. He just thought, oh, y'all just Shout in the there, they work in the studio. Record me. Mm -hmm. The next day he came back and they rolled him in the booth. Before they rolled him in the booth, he was trying to get the beats together. His team didn't have his beats ready, so he went off on the whole room, like on everybody, like, how y'all ain't gonna have my beats ready? I'm at the studio, woo, man, I can't get no beats, woo. And we sitting there like, we got beats. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. Yeah, I make so, a lot of money with relationships. You can go broke and come back and be a millionaire again off of relationships. Mm -hmm. so, Working with uh, Boosie. Boosie. After he had, he had at, 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 while he was dealing with his chemo or after he came off his chemo mm -hmm. uh, that had to be tough and how did you got or did, could you even tell because yeah. i just seen that you know uh, i read that and i was like he was Man. in a wheelchair so yeah we could tell you could you tell yeah, he, they he, told us though he, he knew why he was in houston he was in houston because we have the best medical center um, okay cancer, cancer center, center um in the world so oh, really? when he got cancer um his biggest thing which kind of messed you up in the world a little bit when they told him hey we it's gonna be six months we booked up. We, we booked up. up. It's going to be six months. He said, how much? They said, 90000 He said, I'll bring it to you tomorrow. Damn. Hey, we'll cut on you Tuesday. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> so, is he money? So, that, he, that, like, that's yeah. so he stayed yeah. in Houston. Imagine all the people that didn't pass away because they didn't have the yeah. physical cash right. to get the treatment. Right. Said, I don't think I'm going to make it that long. Because some people are like, like, I can't wait. Yeah, he was like, I can't wait six months, bro. I got the money. What you need? What you own? And I'm fresh out of jail. I got money on me. I need to go. I need to be able to move around. I can't be sick. Because my That's life worth more than this. For I can sure. turn around and make that money back. Yeah, right, for, for sure. sure. And then you guys start working with him at that he, point he, um, from day one. The he was first day he got in Houston. He went to a studio, I think the first day. I don't know what studio it is. So I don't want to bad talk about his studio. But the first studio he went to, I mean, you come here to get a chemo and, you know, get your cancer situation going. And people are taking pictures of you. It's one of the studios people can pull up at. Our studio is our, everybody knows us, even our, our closest friends. So you don't pull up private. at our studio without calling. Call. It's private. You gotta, you you gotta call somebody before you pull up. So when he figured that out, he called uh, Slim, and Slim called us that morning, like eight o'clock in the morning. Hey, Boosie, looking for the studio. We end up got getting dressed, rushing to the studio like nine at nine a.m. You know, rappers. I don't hear from rappers till one, two o'clock mm -hmm. p.m. And that's the early ones. And um, he pulled up with his crew, and in a wheelchair and they rolled him in there and I think that first session they rolled him straight to the booth and he sat in the booth all day and behind the microphone and just rap and I think then it kind of that led to like what two months two three, three months. months yeah two three months every the very day. next day that's how we locked in the first mm -hmm. day we locked in with him when he came to the studio he don't know us from a can of yeah, he got yeah. a thug wrong. refused us, re referred him to the studio he just thought oh y'all just Shout in there and they work in the studio record me mm -hmm. the next day he came back and they rolled him in the booth. Before they rolled him in the booth, he was trying to get the beats together. His team didn't have his beats ready, so he went off on the whole room, like on everybody, like, how y'all ain't gonna have my beats ready? I'm at the studio, woo, man, I can't get no beats, woo. And we sitting there like, we got beats. Uh -huh. And played one beat, and it, went, it was a rap after they that. They did 17 songs with it, 17, 18 From that songs. one beat, we did, our, yeah. we did 17 more songs. He was yeah. like, play another one, play another one, yeah. play another one. He rapped to all of them, we made a whole album. Yeah. Man, that's and he's crazy. looking at us like, yeah. man, ain't nobody rapping on y'all shit, man. Who y'all niggas? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, y'all like, be like this. Where the other one at? If one not there, where the other one at? Man, he couldn't tell us yeah, apart at one time. He, both of us, we, we both GNB. Hey, GNB. Yeah. GNB. It went from where the other one to GNB. So he'll call me GNB. He'll call him GNB. Yeah, and then now, now, now we, we yeah. Now know. Yeah, we go to Atlanta State his house and everything. That's, big, good. that's it's hard. Good. Yeah. All the time. For that's sure, hard, sure. man. And and what, how how important is relationships and what Very you guys important. do, right? That's everything. Very we got to speak on that a little yeah, bit so yeah, people relationships can, to help like our this. youngsters to know. Because a lot of them think is, you know, I know people who basically have they meet somebody. I know these guys have done whole projects with major producers, and then after me and them come together, they can't even make a phone call to them. Mm. Nah, nah, they ain't got no person. No, because they never. I'm telling you, yeah. I've seen this happen. 
Some people, don't speak, know, some it. people be too cool to talk to people, man. That's what it is. Nah, or trying man. to stay so professional. That we don't, they don't have, have management. They're trying to right. stay so, so yeah, professional. We're not, we're not we don't have management. We don't have PR. We're we don't have none of that. So if we don't say nothing to nobody, we're not going to get to see this person again. Yeah. I'm going to say something right here, yeah. right then and there. Mm -hmm. So that's how we build it. And a lot of times they make the person look at you like, damn, you kind of bold. Yeah, take mm -hmm. my number out. Yeah, sure. I'm gonna use it. That's hard. But yeah. you know what too? I noticed we have we have a lot of relationships with people that we haven't even worked with. So okay. when you'll see us work, you don't even realize this is a relationship that's been going on for three years. Mm -hmm. That we would come by, come by the studio, and we've never made a song. And wow. then now we're making songs, and you think, oh yeah, y'all met now. Nah, nah, we've been rocking with them two years already. Just wow. every time they come to the city, they come fool with us. Wow, that's you know cool. what I'm saying. We'll have those kind of relationships also. So you know, outside of yourselves, who who. Who do you think, and it, this goes to both of y'all, because y'all are both not going to have the same answer. Mm. Hardest producer ever. Mm. Ever? Mm. They might not have the same. That's what I said. They're not going to have the same answer. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go. I'm, I'm, I just want to hear the, I want to hear what they say. You start with B? Oh. That's, that's impossible to answer, yeah. but I have to break it down. Like, how mm. hardest producer ever? And I have to break it down, like, in our world. Yeah. Um, you say in our, in our world, which matter of fact, top three. Let's do the top three because we do ever, it ever. Ever. Right. Top so three of all like time, okay. dead or alive. I think we can Any agree on one. No, 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 no. Okay. I want heal separate from yours. Okay. Okay. I would say, drummer boy. Mm -hmm. You like That's drummer boy? Let me tell you why. Let me tell you That's why. Number one. Let me tell you why. It's not number one because I can't put him in order. But let me tell you why drummer boy is one of the greatest. Because we are we friends with drummer boy too. By the mm -hmm. way, wow. Let, so, let me just say that drummer boy it was one night when me and you was in Vegas. And I shut it down. I had them all white and my guys with me. Wasn't an all white party, <laughs> nigga. And you came to me and asked me, hey, man, let's take this picture, nigga. You remember that? Because the old man has still got it, nigga. <laughs> One, two, yeah, 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 yeah. And the picture on the wall at the store, nigga, I got proof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still there. Still yeah, we yeah. kicked it. All right, so boom. Drummer Boy, I'm going to say this. Because from in our era, we're the same exact age. We come up at the same time. He hard, he, man. He was coming up. He, yeah. Like, he tore up everything. He had an error, didn't he? He, was, yeah, he had a run. He had a run. <laughs> he had a run. And you couldn't escape him. Yeah. And that made, he him. made, a, he single handedly made us up our game up. Yeah. yeah. For sure. In producing. He's like, oh, nah. Because he doing what we trying to do. Yeah. Like, we were, we were trying to be those guys that, I mean, that guy that he was, like, working with everybody. Yeah. We were trying to do that already. That's whole. But we had Houston on, like, he just had the whole world because yeah. he was in Atlanta. That's we were in Houston. And the whole world was going to Atlanta at the time. Right. Wow. So, yeah, he was here. Yeah, we thinking away. that the eyes were coming to Houston because of the steel tipping and all that. So, yeah. we come in Houston and we're going to do what, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He went to Atlanta and phew, that's where the whole game went. Damn. Right. Right. So, uh, that's good stuff. But Thanks. Drummer Boy, Dr. Yeah. Dre. That third one gonna be hard, man. Cause Dr. Uh, Dre, Dr. Nigga. Dre for sure. He gonna always be. What's well, the hardest ever. song he ever produced? Hardest song he ever produced? Let me see if this nigga uh, gonna get it right. You know? <laughs> nigga, I got mine. Right. Nigga, let me see if this nigga I'm gonna, gonna get it right. I'm gonna say to me, hardest. Let's song see if ever. this nigga gonna get let it right. right. Hell no, nah, man. Off the chronic. Hell no. Nah. Hell that's yeah. That's my, what he say. Hell yeah. On that's, that's, my, <laughs> oh, let me write. that's my favorite. Hell yeah. That's my favorite album, man. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gon' talk.